kid, my family took a lot of vacations, um, and usually my dad would plan them around six months in advance. Um, sometimes he would make the mistake of telling us prematurely, and then if money fell through or something, um, Jen and I, would, my sister, would just be so upset that we didn't go. Um, but this one time when he told us about a trip that we were going to Tennessee, I didn't, I was in second grade, around seven years old, I had no idea what Tennessee was. Um, it could have been a different country to me. Um, but anyway, that was, that was a trip we were going on. I was so excited. And I remember at school we had to write journals. And I wrote about it in my journal saying, like, I'm going to a cabin in Tennessee with my family. And I'm too cool for school and stuff like that. Um, but what made this trip even better was that we were renting a minivan. When I was a kid, there were many things that I thought were so monumental and life-changing that now seem pretty trivial. But my sister and I loved minivans. In particular, we really wanted a Ford Windstar. And we wanted bucket seats. I'm not sure if you're familiar with bucket versus bench seats, but in the back seat, it's two separate seats instead of both together. Because Jennifer and I were too awesome to sit next to each other. And plus, if we sat next to each other anyway, I probably would have jabbed her with my elbow and started some kind of argument. Um, so it was best that we had bucket seats. But this was what we were renting on this vacation. And it was definitely a step up from our old Ford station wagon, which was red, that my mom would drop us off every day at school, and it sounded like an alien. And I would just hope and pray that nobody would see me getting out of this terrible car that should be thrown into a garbage dump. Um, so we were, we were ecstatic, couldn't wait to go to Tennessee, whatever that was, and ride in this minivan. And before we went, there was, my parents uh, met with their friends and they were talking about the guardrails on the mountain. And my parents' friends said that there are no guardrails there and you have to drive really carefully. And we, I remember we set off on our trip, we were in the mountains, of course we were going up the mountain and there were no guardrails. And I didn't know what those were but I knew when they were missing. And so I just remember looking out the window and seeing the steep hill and rocks and everything, imagining us, my dad making one wrong move and us plummeting to our death. Fortunately, this didn't happen. Um, I'm here. So everything's okay. Um, so we got to the cabin, and there was a steep hill. It was in a forest. And there was a steep gravel hill that my parents had a lot of trouble getting the minivan up over. So they called the owner of the cabin, his name was Clark, I remember because we referenced back to him many times. My dad does a great imitation of him. Um, I can't do it justice, so I'm not going to demonstrate it. But he came out and helped us somehow with his magical cabin taking care of powers. Um, he knew how to get this mini down up the hill. And we all stayed at the bottom of the hill. Um, my family had no trouble going up this gravel hill, but for me it was really steep. So I just stood at the bottom kind of like, I don't know how to get up the hill, and stuff like that. Um, my family kind of had to coax me up the hill. I don't know how I got up the hill, maybe they carried me, um, but I had the same problem when we were going downhill too, so, terrifying experience. So you're hanging out at the cabin, it was really nice, there was a hot tub, upstairs there was a rec room that had a pool table, and my sister and I, we didn't know how to play pool, but we did some kind of thing with the pool balls, I don't know what, um, threw them at each other or something. 
Um, but my dad was a pool shark, and so he's like, you know, he knows what to do, and kicks the eight ball and last, things of the sort. And so while we're hanging out here, Jennifer, my sister, and I found Monopoly. And we loved playing games together. And this one in particular did not end so well. We somehow got in a fight. It could be a corrupted memory, but I think my dad ended up dragging my sister away. And there was ripped money on the floor. And there was money everywhere. I think we cleaned it up. My mom would have made us clean it up. Um, so, yeah, we were hanging out at the cabin. We were doing a bunch of different things. I don't know exactly what. Um, they were probably boring. Like, we might have gotten a tour of a brewery or something. Um, my dad was encouraging underrated drinking, obviously. But we did go to many breweries when I was younger. Equally boring every time. Um, and one day I remember there was, I was in the bathroom and I heard some kind of gurgling, strange noise coming out of the bathtub. And so I looked over and looked at what it was and there was this black water and goop coming out of the drain. I immediately got my parents' attention about it and they called Clark. And he came over, looked at it. I don't know if any of you have had... Uh, a lot of trees around your house, but trees really like getting stuff from the sewer with their roots and clogging it up because they really like the contents of the sewer. Um, and that's happened to my parents a couple times. Uh, I don't know how Clark did it, but he fixed our plumbing somehow, even though that can be an expensive job if your sewer is clogged with roots. Very, very expensive. Um, one of the days we went to a magic show, and it was great. My sister got a potato gun. Uh, you don't shoot a whole potato, but it's like a little, you, you stick the gun in, and there's a little wedge of potato, and you shoot it. Um, we shot up many of those. We probably spent hours shooting little bits of potato into the forest. I'm sure animals ate well that night. I got this little vial of powder that when you pour it into a drink, it turns into jello. And so I thought it would be fun to put it in my dad's coffee. Now me being an adult now, I understand the importance of coffee. But when I was a kid, I thought it tasted like earwax. I didn't know why anybody needed it. So I poured this in my dad's coffee, um, and he went to go drink it, and of course he's like, oh no, it's like Jello. Um, so he didn't, obviously he didn't drink it, that I know of. Um, but I feel bad for it now because I know how important coffee is. But he was, he was a trooper, and he was like, oh, this is funny, haha, from the magic show, and stuff like that. Um, so I thought it was very fun, and I wish I could still find that powder, but I don't know what happened. It might just be gelatin or something. And another memorable experience from this trip was when I looked out the window to the front porch, and there was this black thing wrapped around one of the poles. I, I had no idea what it could be, so I got my parents, and Jen came over too. And my parents looked at it, and they are like, oh, it's a snake! And Jennifer was super terrified. She was saying, we shouldn't have come on this trip. This is scary. I want to go home. We should have just stayed home. Uh, but I liked amphibians and reptiles, so I was fascinated. I was like, cool, what kind of snake is this? Is it venomous? Um, but later we checked in with Clark. He said it probably was not venomous. Um, so that was an extremely memorable trip from my childhood. Um, Definitely had a lot of character building experiences. And I hope you guys enjoyed that little tidbit of my childhood. Um, and I do remember when we had to bring the minivan back, I think I started crying. <laughs>